Okay, uh, greetings, uh, welcome uh, to this course on control systems. Uh, so, this is a course on control systems and uh, to be more uh, specific, this is a first level uh, undergraduate uh, course on control systems, you know like where we are going to uh, learn the basics uh, behind uh, what is called as classical control theory and uh, we would learn how to design uh, controllers for uh, dynamic systems that we encoded in practice. Okay? Uh, so, uh, before we uh, go into the uh, details of what we uh, would learn in this particular course, uh, let us just look at the title of this course. Right? So, there are two words uh, in this title. So, the first word is uh, what we call as a system. So, let us discuss what we would uh, what to say uh, refer to as a system in this particular course. So, for us a system is an entity to which uh, we give an input uh, u of t and we get an output uh, y of t. Okay. So, this is uh, typically uh, called as a dynamic system uh, in the sense that you know like it, it essentially deals with uh, variables you know like inputs and outputs that are uh, functions of time. Okay. So, as far as uh, this dynamic system is concerned you know like time is the independent variable and uh, all other variables that are associated with the system are uh, functions of time. Okay. So, all variables uh, that are associated with the system are functions of time. Okay. So, we are going to deal with uh, the so called uh, dynamic systems you know like where essentially variables change with time and uh, a system or a process or a plant uh, essentially is an entity that is given an input and uh, produces an output. Okay? So, that is the visualization we would be uh, having right for the system. So, uh, once again you know like there are alternative uh, terms for the system you know like some would call uh, the system as a plant. Okay, uh, uh, if you go to chemical engineering for example, you know like uh, this would be uh, they would be dealing with uh, processes you know like so a process is also visualized as an entity to which we give an input and we get an output right. So, uh, there are various terms that are uh, typically used. So, for us you know like a system is a collection of objects okay let's let me group it as one phrase or a process okay that is understood okay so for that's what uh, we would refer to as a system okay so <clears throat> of course although we are not going to uh, uh, repeatedly use various adjectives uh, to denote the type of systems that we are going to look at uh, we will uh, first uh, study what class of systems that we are going to be uh, concentrating on and then we will go forward. Okay? Uh, so, the uh, class of dynamic systems that we would be looking at in this particular course uh, belong to what are called as uh, linear time invariant uh, causal dynamic systems and by and large we will restrict ourselves to what are called single input single output systems. Okay? So, before we get into that you know like uh, we would see that mathematically uh, we would uh, we can uh, visualize a system a dynamic system as a mapping S
from u of t to y of t. Okay. So, that is what we are going to say is that we would have y of t to be equal to s, ta, s of u of t. Okay. So, essentially we would pictureize uh, a system as a mapping s which uh, takes an input u t and uh, delivers an output uh, y of t. Okay. So, that uh, is a mathematical visualization of a dynamic system. Okay. So, given this you know like there are various uh, classes of systems uh, that one could uh, uh, essentially study. So, let us look at some classes of uh, dynamic systems. So, as far as classification of dynamic systems is concerned. So, the first uh, uh, classification that we would consider uh, is uh, based on the number of inputs and outputs. Okay. So, what we abbreviate as uh, CISO and MIMO. So, what is CISO? CISO is nothing but uh, single input, single output and the abbreviation MIMO uh, stands for multiple input, multiple output systems. Okay. So, uh, see we can uh, uh, visualize in, in fact even the input and the output right function uh, as a mapping from the time domain to a to the domain of real numbers right. See for example, uh, if I deal with uh, a single input single output system right I can say even the input u is a mapping from the field of real numbers to the field of real numbers right because t belongs to the field of uh, real numbers right. So, essentially we take time and then like uh, the input is a function of time and uh, the in the case of a single input single output system. Uh, the input u is a scalar valued function of time. So, u would be a, a scalar valued function of time right. So, that is why we are writing it in this form and similarly the output y is also a scalar valued uh, function of time. Okay. So, that is essentially a single input single output uh, system. On the other hand uh, let us say we have uh, uh, let us say m inputs and uh, p outputs okay, with uh, m being greater than 1 and also p being greater than 1, what is going to happen is that uh, we can have, we would have our input to be a vector valued function which will take time and then map it to a vector of dimension m. Similarly, I would have uh, the output vector to be a vector valued function of time which will map it to a vector of dimension p. Okay. So, that will be uh, uh, a scenario of uh, multiple input multiple output system. Okay. So, uh, in this particular course we are going to be interested in uh, CISO systems, okay, CISO dynamic systems. Okay. So, that is the class of systems we would be uh, focusing on in this particular course. Okay. So, uh, the first classification was based on the number of uh, inputs and outputs. The uh, second classification that we are going to look at is whether uh, a particular uh, system is linear or non-linear. So, what do we mean by this? Right? So, let us uh, look at uh, the uh, definition of linearity shortly. Right? So, let us say uh, we have a system yes, and uh, let us say we provide an input u1 of t and we get an output y1 of t and uh, to the same system and let us say we provide an input u2 of t and we get an output y2 of t. Now, given these uh, two arbitrary input output combinations right the question that we ask ourselves is that 
<coughs> if to the system we provide an input that is the sum of these two arbitrary inputs u1 plus u2 and if the output is also the sum of the two individual outputs y1 and y2 corresponding to u1 and u2 and if I give any input which is an arbitrary scalar multiple of let us say any arbitrary input u1 and if the output is the same scalar multiple of the corresponding uh, uh, what, uh, output uh, y1 right corresponding to u1 then the system is said to be a linear one okay, provided uh, these two conditions are satisfied. So, condition 1, condition 2. Okay. So, the first condition uh, what, what is typically referred to as additivity, the second condition is referred to as uh, homogeneity. Right? So, the same definition, so this is the definition of a linear system, the same definition uh, can be uh, rewritten in this way. So, let us say if I have a system S, yes, the same system S, yes. let us say I provide an input which is a linear, any arbitrary linear combination of u1 and u2, that means that I am providing a, a input like uh, c1 u1 t plus c2 u2 t, where c1 and c2 are two real numbers. The question is whether I get the same linear combination of the two corresponding outputs y1 and y2. Right? So, if this holds true, then the system is linear. Okay? So, there are two alternative uh, uh, what to say uh, ways of defining, equivalent ways of defining a linear system. One is this okay? and the second one is this. Okay, so, uh, typically people call this as the principle of superposition right, for linear mappings. So, that is what is, uh, it is called as. So, essentially a linear system you know like uh, satisfies you know like uh, these conditions. Right? So, uh, of course, we would uh, see that in reality you know like uh, uh, you know like most processes, most plans, most systems are going to be uh, linear, non-linear. Right? Uh, so, linearity by and large we would realize if we when we work with practical problems is that it is going to be an approximation of reality that should be kept in mind. Okay? So, in this particular course you know like uh, by, uh, we are going to deal with uh, linear systems. Okay? So, uh, we will we'll, after we go through all the uh, classifications we will summarize uh, what we are going to deal with. Right? So, finally. So, the third classification that we are going to look at uh, is that of a time invariant system which is a time varying system. Okay? So, the question is that like what is this uh, concept of time invariance? So, uh, what is time invariance? Uh, let me demonstrate by a simple uh, diagram. So, let us say I, I have a system and uh, I provide some input to it okay, u of t okay, at time t equals 0, let us say I provide a step input and I get an output which is some, some output like this. Okay. Now, let us say I now provide the same input u of t after a time uh, interval of let us say capital T, I provide the same input u of t, uh, but I uh, essentially provide it after a time interval of capital T. Uh, the question becomes you know like uh, do I get the same output? Uh, so, uh, uh, if the output is the same function which is delayed by capital T, then the system is said to be time invariance. Right? So, or uh, in other words, 
uh, the question that we are asking ourselves is that like uh, do we get the same output if we provide the same input no matter at what time do we, uh, we provide the input to the system. Okay? If that is the case then the system is said to be time invariant. Okay? So, let me write it down. So, a time a time invariant system is one where uh, a time invariant system is one that provides the same output <coughs> for the same input irrespective of when the input is given. <coughs> so, what is an example? Let us say uh, you know like uh, we take the example of a ceiling fan right that most of us encounter every day. So, suppose you know like if I if I come and switch on a ceiling fan right. So, I am providing an electrical uh, signal as an input to the system right and let us say the output of the system is the rpm of uh, the fan right. So, the speed of rotation of the fan. So, uh, let us say I, I switch on the fan today and I give some electrical uh, input to the fan and let us say the speed of the fan is let us say 100 rpm okay? and I come tomorrow and switch on the same fan provided the input is the same the electrical input is the same right. So, I would expect the speed to be close to 100 rpm once again. Now, if I come after a month and switch on the same fan there may be some wear and tear in the fan. So, given the same electrical input signal you know like I may get the rpm as 99.5 right for example. Let us say I come one year down the line and switch on the same fan with this giving the same electrical input signal the rpm may be 99 rpm for example. right? So, one gets the idea right where we are headed. So, all systems uh, you know like their characteristics or dynamic characteristics change with time right due to various factors. So, in the case of a fan that may be some wear and tear you know like uh, the components might have become old right. So, then the re systems response changes. Now, the question that we are asking ourselves is that like in the time scale of interest uh, as far as a systems analysis is concerned you know like does the response characteristics of the system uh, or the do the re response characteristics of the system remain more or less the same. If that is the case then we approximate the system as a time invariant system. So, in the case of a fan let us say I want to analyze the fan only for a few minutes. So, in those few minutes I can reasonably assume that the uh, response characteristics of the fan is not going to change. So, what do I mean by that in a time scale of a few minutes if I provide the same electrical signal at any instant of time I am going to get close to 100 rpm right. So, which is what I started off with right. On the other hand if I use a fan in an industrial application where it is supposed to run for months without uh, any shutdown then I need to be a bit more careful right. But then my time scale of interest goes in the order of uh, months. So, then we need to ask ourselves the question you know like uh, do I need to consider uh, the uh, variation in the systems response characteristics and model the system as a time varying system. So, that is a question which should be considered asked then. Okay? So, uh, in our course you know like we would consider we would work with uh, what are called uh, time invariant systems. Okay? So, that is the uh, uh, scope of our particular course. So, uh, so, as far as we are concerned so, uh, what is the mathematical definition of time invariant systems? Uh, if uh, y of t is s of u of t uh, then time invariance uh, implies that y of t minus tau or s of u, u, u of uh, t minus tau is going to be equal to uh, y of t 
T minus capital T, right? Sorry, for all capital T belonging to the field of real numbers. Okay, so uh, in essence, you know, like if I shift the input by a time of capital T, you know, I should get the same output shifted by the same amount of time, right? So that's what. Uh, uh, time invariance means. Okay, so in this particular course, we are going to uh, uh, work with uh, time invariant systems. Okay, once again, you know, like time invariance uh, is a is an approximation, right? I'm sure all of us agree that you know, if you look at processes and systems that surround us, we would see that no system provides the same output, you know, like uh, at any point of time in its entire lifetime, right? So, uh, so time variance may become important, right? So, but the question we need to ask ourselves is that like what is the time scale of interest vis a vis the time scale over which uh, the uh, system's characteristics uh, change, right? So, that is the question we need to ask ourselves, right? When we decide to approximate something as uh, uh, time invariant or time varying. So, another classification that we are going to do uh, is that of uh, causal systems this is non causal systems. So, what is a causal system? A causal system uh, is one where the output at any instant of time depends only on past and current inputs. So, a causal system is one uh, in effect which that is non anticipator ok, it does not essentially try to uh, uh, what to say figure out you know like what inputs may come to the system in the near future and take action right now. Okay. So, a causal system is non anticipative okay. that is very very important okay. whereas, a non causal system is anticipative right. Okay. <coughs> so, that is uh, uh, the difference between causal and non causal and in this particular course we are going to consider uh, systems that are causal okay so uh, if we uh, look at uh, this particular uh, course okay uh, 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 so if you recall where we really started off right so and uh, uh, essentially what what we are doing in this particular course you know So, yeah. So, what we are uh, essentially doing, uh, we started off with the title of this course, right? That, that's what we have done. So, I am just uh, touching upon the two words in this title, right? So, the first word we started off uh, looking at uh, is the word systems, right? So, if we look at it, we are going to look at uh, what are called dynamic systems. I am going to write uh, summarize all the adjectives that we are we have encountered. We are going to look at uh, causal systems. Okay. Uh, we are going to look at time invariant systems. Okay. We are going to get look at uh, linear systems. Okay and we are going to look at single input single output systems okay so this is the class of systems that will be under study okay in this course okay so uh, we are going to consider ciso linear time invariant causal or dynamic systems okay i, I hope uh, uh, through this discussion it's clear as to what each one of these uh, words mean right so, by and large linear time invariant is abbreviated as LTI. Okay, the abbreviation LTI stands for linear time invariant, typically LTV stands for linear time varying systems. Okay. So, this is the class of systems that we are going to uh, study. 
Of course, when I ask the question, hey, is this a reasonable class of systems uh, to study? The answer is yes. Uh, this is a useful uh, class of systems to study. Okay, like because we can, we will see that you know, like when we uh, later in this particular course, when we look at case studies and so on, uh, this is a reasonable approximation, right? So as far as many practical problems are uh, concerned. Okay, so this is a useful uh, class of systems to consider and uh, study. Okay, so that's what uh, we are going to do in this particular. Uh, that's what we are going to study in this particular course, right? This class of systems. Okay, now uh, having looked at the word system, now we come to the word control. <coughs> okay. So, uh, let us say you know like uh, what is control, you know like uh, the word control essentially uh, as far as this particular uh, course is concerned, you know we look at the word control to mean uh, making a system. Of course, from here onwards you know like uh, we are going to consider this class of system, you know like that is what we are going to be interested in. In general control is making a system uh, behave as designed. Okay. So, that in a very generic sense is what we would uh, refer to as control. Okay? Now, the questions are like how do we uh, regulate the system, right? Uh, so, that is that's something which we are going to uh, look at. Right? So, let us uh, look at an example. right? So, let us say uh, I consider uh, for example, the a, a DC motor, okay? just uh, to consider this. Okay, so let us say you know like uh, the input uh, to the DC motor, let us say I am doing armature control. So, let us say I provide an voltage V of T to the DC motor and uh, let us say the uh, shaft speed okay, omega T is the output of the DC motor. Okay. So, uh, essentially I visualize the DC motor as a system to which I provide an voltage input V of T and uh, get the speed output right omega of t. Now, the question that we ask ourselves when we want to design controller is that uh, suppose if I want to uh, essentially maintain the speed of the DC motors output shaft at a particular value right what voltage input do I need to provide. Okay? So, that is the question we ask when we want to uh, control this DC motor. Okay? So, what is the question that we are going to ask? Okay, if we wish to achieve a omega desired, okay, that is a desired angular speed uh, for the DC motor, uh, what is the input voltage that should be? provided. Okay, so, that is the question we ask ourselves when we want to uh, control the system. Okay. So, uh, this whole course is about uh, okay, uh, learning how do we uh, do this process. Okay, like So, that is the uh, that is the idea behind this uh, entire course. Right. So, <coughs> so, in a general sense you know like uh, what we will do is that uh, we are going to learn uh, how to design uh, controllers you know like for many practical systems uh, that belong to this class right or that can be approximated by this class of systems and uh, essentially get a uh, output which I desire right from that particular uh, system. Okay? So, that is what we are going to uh, do and uh, what is our approach that we are going to follow. Uh, so, uh, in a very generic sense you know like uh, what we are going to follow is that we are first going to uh, develop a mathematical representation for S. Okay, that is the first step. Okay, so. So, if you recall what was S, S was the mapping between the input and the output. Uh, the process that we will follow is essentially get uh, 
uh, a mapping for S. So, this uh, typically constitutes what is called as uh, mathematical modeling right for the dynamic systems. So, this comes through uh, uh, mathematical uh, modeling of dynamic systems ok. So, of course, there can be various ways of uh, obtaining these mathematical models you know like so, um, uh, by and large in this particular course we would employ physics based models. Of course, we can, one can also uh, have uh, data driven models or empirical models and sometimes you know we use both right. So, we use physics to essentially derive part of the model and a part of the model is uh, obtained by using experimental data right. So, that can be a semi empirical approach also ok. So, but uh, we first step is to essentially develop a mathematical representation for the math. Uh, 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 for what is a mapping S and then like uh, second step is to analyze the system response ok uh, and then the third step is essentially to design the controller ok. So, the in a uh, in a very broad sense right a big picture uh, view perspective uh, these are the three steps involved in our uh, approach ok which we are going to learn in this particular uh, course. Uh, so, uh, so essentially the first step is essentially to uh, get a mathematical representation for this uh, mapping S ok which is, is obtained uh, by and large through uh, this uh, uh, mathematical mo uh, modeling of dynamic systems right. And uh, as I mentioned you know like uh, we can have uh, you know like uh, let us say physics based modeling ok where we use laws of physics to essentially uh, model the system. Uh, we can have data driven or an empirical approach ok. Sometimes uh, we can have a mix of both ok. So, to essentially model the and dynamic systems. Of course, there are various categories of models uh, we will also see uh, you know like which class of models we are going to uh, look at ok.